All right, hello, and uh, welcome to a quick tutorial on how to set up a Raspberry Pi for BrewPi or Fermentrack. Um, all right, first things first, you need to go ahead and download the latest copy of Raspbian. Uh, you can download it straight from the raspberrypi.org website. I prefer to use Raspbian Jesse Lite uh, for headless installations, but if you prefer to hook your Raspberry Pi up to a television and use the graphical interface, uh, you're welcome to do so as well. So I'm going to go ahead and download Raspbian and Jesse Lite. And then once that finishes downloading, I'll go ahead and uh, click here to extract it. Let that extract and then um, come back over and it's time to actually flash it. Now there's instructions on how to go about doing this again on the Raspberry Pi uh, website. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the Mac OS instructions. All right, now I personally prefer the command line instructions. Uh, if you prefer to use the other version, that's fine as well. Um, you can see the full instructions list here, but I'll go ahead and walk you through how we do everything right now. All right, so the first thing you want to do is open up a copy of the uh, terminal. Um, to go ahead and do that, go to Applications, scroll down to Utilities, and then click Terminal. Once you do, you should have something very, very similar to this window pop up right here. So the very first command you're going to want to enter is uh, diskutil list. This command will give you a list of all the disks that are connected to your computer. Uh, you're looking for the one specifically that corresponds to your SD card. So you can see right here uh, I've got disk 3, which is going to be the one that I'm interested in. All right, so now I'm going to unmount the disk using the diskutil unmount disk command. And when entering this, you're going to use the name of that disk you just located. So again, in my case, it's disk 3. All right, so that's now unmounted. The next thing is to actually flash the image. All right, so the command that I'm going to use to flash it is sudo dd um, bs equals 1m uh, if equals, and then I'm going to link to where I downloaded that image file to, and then of equals where I'm actually writing to. Now, one thing to note is in this case, I'm not writing to disk 3. I'm actually writing to r disk 3. Uh, try this. If it works for you, it will be much, much faster. So you're just going to take that disk 3 and add that letter R at the beginning of it. You'll enter your password and then it'll begin flashing. This may take a minute or two. Alright, once that's finished flashing, we're now ready to configure SSH and Wi-Fi before we insert this into our Raspberry Pi. So the first thing you're going to want to do is switch to the boot directory that was just created on the SD card. To do that, just cd slash volumes slash boot. And then this should give you, uh, if you type ls in, this should give you something that looks very, very similar to this. So once we get here, we'll want to go ahead and create a file called ssh, so touch ssh. And that will just create an empty file named ssh at the root of this disk. This will enable us to connect to the headless installation. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is configure Wi-Fi. So I prefer to use nano as my text editor, but you're going to go ahead and open up the WPA underscore supplicant.conf file. All right, the purpose of this file is to allow us to tell the Raspberry Pi how to connect to our Wi-Fi network. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and enter the basic file uh, structure here. You'll need to go ahead and edit this to match your network configuration. So where I have SSID equals network name, uh, this is going to be where I'm going to enter the name of my network. PSK equals your password. This is going to be where you enter the password for your network. And then key management equals WPA PSK dash PSK. Uh, this is generally going to be correct for most Wi-Fi networks. If you know that your key management uh, is different, you can edit this. And if your network is open, you can delete both the PSK and key management options here. Once you've done that, I'm going to hit Control O to write this out, Control X to exit, and then I'm ready to insert this into my Raspberry Pi. All right, so at this point, I've inserted the SD card into the Raspberry Pi, and I've given it a minute or two to connect to the wireless network. Uh, the next thing that I need to do is locate the IP address of the Raspberry Pi so I can SSH into it. The fastest way to do this is actually using a terminal command, so uh, ARP minus A grep raspberry. Um, you can also do this by looking at the setup pages for your router if you prefer. Uh, if I type this in, though, you can see this gives me my IP address, and this right here is the IP address that I need to actually connect to my Raspberry Pi. So now I'm going to actually connect to the Raspberry Pi by using SSH. So I'm going to SSH using the username of Pi, P-I, at that IP address that we found right there. The default password is Raspberry. 
and now I'm logged in. So the very first thing that I should do after I get logged in is actually updating all of the various packages on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to do that using two commands. The first one is sudo apt-git update. Hit it there and let that run. This downloads the latest uh, data on the packages that are available. Once this finishes running, then I'm going to use this data to actually upgrade my packages. The command for that, appropriately enough, is apt-git upgrade. Hit yes here, hit enter, and then let this run. All right, once that process finishes, it'll take a few minutes, go ahead and restart the Raspberry Pi. All right, go ahead and let that restart. And then after a minute or so, go ahead and reconnect. All right, once you've reconnected, um, we're ready to go ahead and begin the next step of the configuration. So I'm gonna run raspi config as root. And then the very first thing you want to do is expand the file system. This will allow you to use the full size of the SD card. Other things that I would recommend that you do, um, come down to advanced options and change the host name. Um, so I would change it from Raspberry Pi to something memorable. Group Pi works. Um, you also might want to um, set the time zone or other things like that. Uh, there are a number of other options that are in here that you can enable if you'd like. Um, go ahead and get those enabled. And once you're done configuring, go ahead and hit finish. This will then reboot one more time, which will enable the remainder of the SD card for use. Alright, at this point your Raspberry Pi is configured and is ready for use.